This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Wednesday, February 27th, 2019. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Anne Arundel County Police have arrested Corey David Martin, 22, of Glen Burnie. And check this out. Around 4 a.m. on Tuesday, a police officer rolled up in Brooklyn Park to Chatham Road in 11th Avenue and noticed a Acura parked on the curb with the driver asleep. Went, knocked on the window, said, hey, what's up? Corey David Martin rolled down the window. The officer said he smelled marijuana and observed contraband in plain view within the vehicle. They searched the vehicle. They found 345 grams of marijuana, 43 HCL pills, which is a muscle relaxant, oxycodone, $10,000 in cash, along with a stolen loaded handgun. Martin was arrested. He is being held at the Jennifer Road Detention Center pending a bail hearing at 1.30 today. In another drug-related story, Anne Arundel County is now the proud new owner of a 38-foot RV, and it is outfitted to help with the drug problem that we're having here. This is a joint initiative between the state and the county health departments, and it's called the Maryland Mobile Wellness Initiative. It was dedicated yesterday, and Lieutenant Governor Boyd Rutherford was there, and he said that heroin is no longer the major ingredient with fentanyl. It is cocaine now. So individuals who thought they were, quote, unquote, safe to use cocaine are finding that their substance of choice is now being mixed with the deadly fentanyl. He added that the mixture is killing more people than heroin mixed with fentanyl. Former County Health Officer and Deputy State Health Secretary Fran Phillips was also there, and she said that the vehicle is going to offer counseling, blood tests, Naxalone, which is Narcan, and resources to connect people to longer-term treatment. Initially, it is going to be stationed at the Arundel House of Hope in Glen Burnie from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Tuesdays and Fridays. It will be staffed by a registered nurse practitioner, a registered nurse, and a peer support specialist to help connect people and get them into treatment. County Executive Stuart Pittman is holding his first budget meeting tonight at 6 p.m. at Southern High School. Councilwoman Jessica Hare will also be on hand to present the budget. And we do encourage everybody to get out there and have a say in one of these meetings. There are seven of them. Pittman says it's expected to last about two hours, and he's got a new toy. If you go to the Anne Arundel County website and go to aacounty.org slash your budget, there is a tool where you can actually build the budget for the county. Pittman says that that is going to help county residents make more informed decisions about the budget, and he will be looking at what the responses you put in there to help him form the thing. One thing I noticed when I was playing it around is that it doesn't have any means to decrease the budget. And if you take a look and see what some of Pittman's promises have been on the campaign trail, as well as early in his term, you can probably figure out what kind of tax hike might be coming down the road. Again, there are seven of these meetings in total. The first one is tonight. The next one is next Tuesday and then the following Thursday. And there is going to be one in each councilmanic district. House Speaker Mike Bush has announced that he has removed Delegate Marianne Lisanti as chair of a subcommittee. Lisanti is a Democrat from Harper County, and she said she was going to issue a statement later yesterday, which never came. But this all stems from a racial slur she used in an Annapolis cigar bar referring to Prince George's County. While talking to somebody who was campaigning down there, she referred to it as a N district. She did apologize to the House Democratic Caucus yesterday morning, and on Monday she apologized to the Legislative Black Caucus. However, Delegate Daryl Barnes, who was the chair of the Black Caucus, said it was a little bit too late and a little bit too short. He said Lasanti's words are a blatant act of racism and said that it came at a time where she should be recognizing the achievements of the African-American community. Barnes continued that her apology was woefully inadequate and that the slur shows that she cannot be entrusted in a leadership role moving forward. Lasanti has agreed to take sensitive training, and she did tell the Washington Post earlier this month that she did not recall specifically using the slur, but was sure that everyone has used it at one point in time. I'm not so sure about that, Delegate Lasanti. In other General Assembly news, the Maryland minimum wage bill is moving forward to $15. Has not been signed into law yet. Obviously, it needs to go back to the House and the Senate and be passed and up to the governor to see what happens there. But the House Economic Matters Committee advanced the bill that would move it to $15, but they tweaked it a little bit. It's going to take a little bit more time to get up there. Instead of being ready to go in 2023, it will now be 2025 with 75 cent per hour increases as opposed to a dollar. 
They've eliminated the provision that increased tipped workers' wages, so they are going to be able to keep their low 363 rate and have the tip credit. It's also going to allow businesses to pay workers younger than 18 years old 85% of the minimum wage. The Board of Public Works will be given a one-time ability to pause the wage increases depending on employment numbers from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. And I'm not quite sure why that is a one-time deal because those statistics fluctuate often and you never know what might happen in the next five years as this goes forward. Hey, on Monday, we gave away a gift card to Carol's Creek Cafe to celebrate Restaurant Week, which rolls in here March 2nd through March 10th. And I've got another one to give away. This one is $50 to Galway Bay, and it is good for, looks like about a year. We'll make this one easy. Send an email to info at ionanapolis.net, listing the other restaurants that are owned by the same people that own Galway Bay here in Anne Arundel County. Get that email into me by 6 p.m. tonight. I will select a winner, and I will have a gift certificate for $50 to Galway Bay on the way to you. And this is all courtesy of the Downtown Annapolis Partnership and Annapolis Restaurant Week. All right, that is about it for the top news today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net throughout the day because we do update it throughout the day. The first link in the show notes will take you to all the different ways that you can connect with us. I do recommend that you take a look at that. And if you're anywhere that you can give us a recommendation or a review, please do that. And give us a recommendation to your friends and colleagues. We would appreciate it. Other than that, need to hang tight. We've got George Young with your local DMV weather, and he's coming up in just one minute. Join Anne Arundel Medical Center Foundation on Saturday, April 27, 2019, at our Denim and Diamonds Bash in Annapolis. Denim and Diamonds is a fun evening under the stars. Featuring fabulous cuisine and gourmet food trucks, live and silent auction, and a live band. Last year, AAMC cared for more than 2,000 patients in our emergency departments suffering from mental illness or addiction. Help us expand much needed inpatient and outpatient programs and services for your community. For tickets and sponsorships, visit aamcdenimanddiamonds.org. Special thanks to our platinum sponsors AAMC Medical Staff, the Chesapeake Bayhawks, Comcast, the Evan K. Thallenberg family, What's Up Media, and WRNR. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Wednesday, February 27th. Yesterday was a nice change of pace after a few days of wet and windy weather, and today and tomorrow will bring more of the same, with sunny skies and light winds each day, with low to mid 40s today, and mid to upper 40s tomorrow for highs. Then skies will become more active again, with a bit of a wintry mix overnight Thursday through Friday morning, before all precip turns to rain Friday afternoon for Annapolis and all of Anne Arundel County, with a chance of rain lingering through the night Friday night into the p.m. hour Saturday. And once the rain and clouds finally clear out late Saturday night and into early Sunday morning, it'll be much colder through the day Sunday, with highs in the upper 30s to lower 40s before even colder air moves in early next week. So keep those winter jackets ready as we're still a few weeks away from true spring, despite meteorological spring starting this Friday, March 1st. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great day out there and be sure to get our free app on all of your devices by searching for DC MDVA Weather in the Apple or Google App Stores. And also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and on our website at dmvweather.com so you can always stay weather informed. Imagine your child saying, Guess what I learned in school today? At St. Andrews, it happens every day. We asked Emma and Lawson why. We grow winter greens in our garden to make smoothies. Second graders are the chicken checkers and our eighth graders take care of our goats. Our classes are the perfect size, which means we get to know each other well. And our teachers know us. Visit St. Andrews Day School's Open House, Friday, March 8th from 9 to 11 a.m. Or call 410-266-0952 for a tour. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.